before I even start this review, I just want to get something out there right now. If you like this game for whatever reason, and are going to get mad at me for not liking it, I'm just going to tell you right now, I don't like it. So, I don't want another Sonic Heroes situation where I complain about this video game and do a review of it and about how bad it is, and then everybody and their mother leaves a comment telling me that I'm a terrible person because I don't like the game. Like, I don't, I don't want that. So, I'm warning you now. You have been warned. I do not like this game. So, if you still sit here, you watch the review, and you decide to post a comment telling me how much I suck because I don't like this game, then just know that... First of all, you've been warned, and second, if you're not going to respect my opinion, I'm not going to respect yours. So, that's all there is to it. Let's actually start this thing now. After Sonic Heroes left many fans and critics feeling a little underwhelmed, Sega didn't know what to do. And clearly, they didn't afterwards either, because their next major console outing was Shadow the Hedgehog in 2005. Shadow as a character is one of the most controversial in the whole series, but it's hard to deny his popularity. That's why they brought him back in Heroes. So I guess they felt the need to explain why he's suddenly not dead and make a game about him. Since the market was also getting more into grittier shooting games, Sega also decided to try something different by taking Shadow into a darker direction with guns and swearing. Yes, this is as completely stupid as it sounds. So let's take a look at Shadow the Hedgehog, starting with one of the worst parts, the story. Now, the story in this game is so convoluted and hard to follow that I'm just going to try to briefly explain it, so here it goes. Basically, Shadow still has amnesia after Sonic Heroes and can't remember who he is. Meanwhile, a group of aliens known as the Black Arms, ran by Black Doom, are trying to take over the planet. Black Doom claims that he knows the secrets of Shadow's past and tells him he'll help him discover them if Shadow agrees to do their bidding. While this is going on, Gunn and the President are also trying to stop the Black Arms, as well as Shadow himself. The leader of Gunn, the Gun Commander, seriously, he doesn't have a name, apparently has a personal vendetta against Shadow because he was a childhood friend of Maria and had a thing for her and blamed Shadow for her death or something like that. And then, while all this is going on, Shadow keeps having flashbacks about the past and has to find the Chaos Emeralds and hope that they can help him in some way. In the end, it turned out Black Doom played a part in the creation of Shadow with the help of Gerald Robotnik from Sonic Adventure 2. Since the game has the gimmick of being able to pick your path, be it good, evil, or neutral, the story changes depending on the path you take, but literally none of the story elements add up. There's over 300 different possible storylines. Yes, they actually expect you to play this game over 300 times, and not one of them makes sense. One minute, Shadow's floating in space with Black Doom, the next he's in some ruins or hacking into a computer with Espio or at a circus with Tails. Like, what? What is even going on anymore? The Sonic series has never been known for its amazing storytelling skills, but at least in the adventure games, the stories were easy to follow even if they were stupid. And Sonic Heroes, while it had an awful and very little story, it was at least consistent. This game just throws different plot lines at you all the time. It's too busy trying to justify its own existence to actually tell a decent story. Basing a game on Shadow isn't the worst idea ever. He's an interesting enough character with an interesting enough story in my opinion, but instead of just telling the story we know from Adventure 2, they create all these plot holes that weren't in that game and just create a mess of a story. Every stage ends and begins with a cutscene and in-stage dialogue also occasionally involves story element. There's just too much going on. I can honestly say, without exaggeration, that Shadow the Hedgehog has the absolute worst story in any Sonic game. Worse than Sonic Chronicles, worse than Sonic 06, worse than any of the writer's games, Shadow is bad. But hey, the fun doesn't stop there, let's talk about the gameplay now. As you'll likely already know, Sega was trying to make this game in a new direction and make it something unique to the series. And boy, was that a mistake. Okay, first of all, the obvious new addition. Shadow can carry weapons and shoot guns. Yes, this is very stupid and makes no sense even for Shadow's character. He's the ultimate life form, why does he need to shoot bazookas at people? You find guns in boxes and steal them for enemies and press a button to fire and a button to throw them away. I guess it controls well enough, but it's just a dumb concept to begin with. 
Not to mention, Shadow can still homing attack everything, and almost every enemy and boss can be killed with that move alone, so the guns are really unnecessary. Only the reason to use them is that the homing attack sucks, likely in an attempt to play up the whole hey, guns are awesome thing. The second most obvious change in format is the ability to pick your path. Almost every stage has a good mission, a bad mission, and a neutral mission. Beating a certain mission determines which path you take in the story and which stage you go to next. However, the pick your path thing was implemented so poorly it almost doesn't matter. The missions are all incredibly lame, repetitive, and tedious. Most of the good missions are just kill all the aliens, while the bad missions are either kill all the humans or blow something really big up. Whatever mission you choose to do, it doesn't matter because both the black arms and guns still try to kill you throughout the whole stage. Even if you're doing the evil mission, the aliens still constantly want you dead. This is incredibly frustrating and awful game design. One of the biggest fundamental flaws of the whole game. Not to mention, the choices you make barely matter because you can simply press start and change the mission on the fly. Can you think of any other game with good and bad choices where you can do that? Infamous? No. Epic Mickey? No. The Those Star Wars games? The Force Unleashed? No. I sure can't think of any. Why even bother having them at all? It makes no sense. The third new gameplay mechanic is the chaos moves. If you kill a certain number of good or bad enemies, you fill up a bar in either top corner of the screen and can unleash a chaos move. Beat enough good guys and you get chaos blast, which is just a really big explosion. The one you get for killing bad guys is chaos control, which is one of the most broken mechanics in any video game ever. It's basically the press this button to win move. When pressed, Shadow goes speeding through the stage faster than Sonic with boost ever could. This is pretty much the ultimate way to beat any of the neutral missions, as those are normally just get to the end of the stage. Although it isn't very helpful in any of the kill certain enemy missions, because you just zoom on by them. The last new feature they added was Shadow's ability to ride vehicles. Yes, because the creature with speed as fast as the fastest thing alive needs to be riding around in giant tanks and jeeps. I don't have much to say about this one, they're mostly optional and they control like garbage, but with the exception of a few flying sections, you can skip them completely. Other than that, Shadow controls like he normally would. He can jump, homing attack, run really fast, spin dash, which was moved to a separate button so that the fire button can take its place. It gets a little confusing if you're used to the Sonic Adventure 2 setup. Now let's talk about the stages, because boy does this game have some really bad stages. First of all, while there are quite a few of them, they all blend together and reuse assets from others. There's multiple ruin stages, computer stages, arc stages, so while you may be playing different stages in the story, it sure won't feel like it. Second, I'm going to make my most common complaint here. They're too long. Like, way too long. Because they're mission-based, most of the stages are really big, and thus hard to make it through in less than 10 minutes. It gets even worse when you're trying to kill all the enemies and miss one and have to backtrack through the stage just to find it. That's not what I play games for like this. One mission in particular, on a stage called Dark Impact, involves having to defeat 35 Artificial Chaos. This stage is gigantic. You have to constantly go from area to area on these slowly moving on-rail turrets, hoping to come across some of these enemies. You have to ride elevators, take branching paths, and it's just all terrible. It took me over 30 minutes to beat this stage in my most recent playthrough. And yes, I know I suck at video games, and some of you probably played this game so many times you can beat it in 10, but I remember it taking about this long when I first played the game in 2005 as well. The enemies are hidden down every path, so you have to constantly backtrack to the branching paths you didn't take just to find one lousy enemy. Not to mention, every area looks exactly the same, so it's hard to tell where you've been or haven't been. And a lot of the stages are like this. There's a stage where you have to disarm a bunch of bombs with knuckles, and the stage is so big that it's easy to get lost. And the bombs detonate, so you can actually fail this mission if you miss just one and don't get back to it in time. Then there's the computer stages. Boy, do I hate these stages. While they're certainly the most creative in the whole game, they're also some of the most frustrating and poorly designed stages in any video game I have ever played. They start out fine, but then you get to this huge field of circuits and you have to spin dash through. And you're constantly going one direction or another and you have no idea where you are and where you've been because the stage is huge and everything looks the same and... I hate this game! 
Why is it so hard to just let me run at the end of the stage and occasionally shoot things if that's what you want? Why do I have to get to parts where I'm forced to spend five minutes figuring out where to actually go? Did you guys ever play any of your older games when you developed this mess? This game also has some of the fewest and worst bosses in the series. Each story you only fight about two of them, a mid-boss and a final boss, and they repeat throughout the different stories. There's a grand total of only seven different bosses in the game. Eight if you count Blue Falcon and Heavy Dog as separate bosses, but they're the same damn thing. Also, Blue Falcon and another enemy called Black Bull? Yeah, okay Sega. Most of the bosses can be killed by homing attack, but shooting them is the way to go. Their patterns are simple and they're all really easy. They're just a bit time consuming because their humongous life bars take forever to drain. Remember in most Sonic games how even enemies with life bars take only a few hits to kill? Well not here, you have to slowly drain their life bar with every hit. It's pathetic. The final boss, Devil Doom, is also incredibly easy, and it's just a supersonic in space battle, but with Shadow. Also, in order to unlock him, you have to get the main game's ten main endings and unlock the last story. Yes, you do have to beat the game ten times just to find out that all ten of those endings mean nothing because there's actually a true ending afterwards. Thanks for that, Sega. On a technical standpoint, this game is pretty awful as well. The graphics are just... bad even compared to heroes. Just look at these human character models. Goldeneye on the Nintendo 64 looked better. The controls, as I've already mentioned, are pretty bad too, but it is at least playable if you can get used to them, and surprisingly, the camera is one of the best in this specific era of Sonic games. You can control it with the C-Stick, so if it does get jumpy, you can just move it. It's far from perfect, but I'll give the game credit where credit is due. The music is hit or miss, which is a shame for a Sonic game. The only real memorable tracks are the two awesome themes by Crush 40. Overall, this game is really, really bad, and really, really stupid. That's just what turns me off about it the most. The idea is dumb. Why does Shadow need guns? Why is he swearing? Why am I playing a Sonic game where I can drive around in tanks? Why is the president involved so heavily? Why does this game exist? Why are there aliens? It's like a parody of a Sonic game, and yet throughout the whole game, they want you to take it seriously. The game is so into itself and takes itself so seriously, you can't help but kind of feel sorry for it. It's just so stupid, it doesn't know any better. I know what Sega was trying to do. They were trying to tell Shadow's story as well as make it seem like its own standalone game. Maybe in an attempt to make more like this, but it just didn't work. You never feel like you're playing a Shadow game, you feel like you're playing a really awful Sonic game. They tried to disconnect it from the series, but they were also too scared it wouldn't work. I know some of you have been yelling throughout the review, but it's not a Sonic game, who cares if the stages are long? Well, yeah, it is. Shadow still can do everything Sonic can, he can still run really fast, he goes through loops, collect rings, all of the major Sonic characters are there, it never truly strayed away from its roots, and instead of feeling like a unique product, it felt like a Sonic game with a lot of really stupid gimmicks. Compare it to Nintendo's Wario Land series. It's obviously a spin-off of the Mario games, but aside from Wario himself, the whole game is nothing like a Mario game. The locales are different, the characters are different, and even though it is a side-scrolling platformer, Wario plays nothing like Mario, and the goals of the game are completely different. Shadow never does this. It's just a really bad Sonic game where you play as a different character, and it never, ever works. It's an incredibly stupid game with poor gameplay and one of the worst stories in gaming history. Stay away from this game. Forget it exists. Even if you really like Shadow as a character, do yourself a favor and don't play it. You'll just end up hating him by the end of it.